In this video, we're going to prove their division algorithm. It states that given two integers, A and B, where B is positive, there exists a unique Q and R such that this is true when R is positive or zero for less than B. Now, we have the well-ordering principle and it says that if you find a bound, if you have a set is bounded and you find an element is bounded below and you find an element in it, then there's a smaller element. Well, when you do long division, you want Q to be as large as possible, but that causes R to be smaller. R gets smaller as Q gets larger. For example, 22 is equal to 3 times 6 plus 4. The quotient is 6. The remainder is 4. But you know what? I can, so that's Q and R. I can use a larger quotient, 7. Then the remainder is just 1. The remainder is 1. You make Q larger, R gets smaller. So now, I know that R from this equation right here, R is equal to A minus QB. And I want this to be as small as possible. So I define a set S that is equal to this set of A minus XB, such that X, remember, our uh, integers go here, such that X is an integer, and A minus XB is non-negative. And I want to find the smallest set, sorry, the smallest element in this set. Well, and that smallest element we're going to call R. So I need to find something in set S. Then I can define R to be the smallest element. Okay, so what I do here is I say, how about we let the app, sorry, how about we let X equal to negative the absolute value of X. Now, we said somewhere that 0 is less than R is less than B. That implies that B is bigger than 0. It's not equal to 0 because it's not equal to R. R may be 0, but B is bigger than R. So B must be bigger than 0. Well, since B is an integer, that means B must be at least 1. B must be at least 1. I mean, the integers go from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 1 to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, if B is bigger than 0, then B is not 0 or any of these numbers. Because the numbers that I'm crossing out are not bigger than 0. So B can only be one of those numbers. Okay. So, question is, how does that help us? So, what we know is the following. We know that A minus XB, negative the absolute value of A, times B, this is a plus the absolute value of b. But since b is bigger than 1, or equal to 1, this sum is at least a plus the absolute value of a. Now, I maintain that that's always bigger than or equal to 0. I mean, for example, if a is bigger than 0, 
then a plus the absolute value of a is a plus a, which is 2a, which is at least 0. If a is less than 0, then the absolute value, a plus the absolute value of a is a plus negative a, which is 0, and that 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Over here, if a is 0, then you have 0 plus the absolute value of 0, which is 0, and that's bigger than or equal to 0. So, a plus the absolute value of a is most definitely bigger than or equal to 0. But, but wait a minute, wait a minute. a minus some integer times b is bigger than 0. This implies that this implies that this quantity, which I'm about to box, this quantity is an S. That implies that A minus negative absolute value of A times B is an S, which implies S is not the empty set. But this implies by the well ordering principle that S has a smallest element. How about we call this number R? So we claim that R is the smallest element. Now, I claim that R is less than B. Otherwise, R would be greater than or equal to B. And this is where we have trouble. If we take A minus Q plus 1 times B, this is an element in S, this is equal to A minus QB minus B. Well, this is R, and that's minus B. Well, this is less than R. But, but wait a minute. I found another element in S. This element is in is S, but it's smaller than R. Uh-uh. R is the smallest element. S has the smallest element, and we're calling it R. So, if R is bigger than or equal to B, that's not true. So, R is less than B. Okay, now we're almost done. All we have to do is show that it's unique. Now, I, I do want to say one thing. R, R is an element in S. Okay, R is equal to that for some special X. And this is positive. That is, R is positive. Okay? We know that R is greater than or equal to zero. So, we have R right where we're supposed to have it. We're supposed to have R jammed between zero and B, and it can equal R. So, what we have here is now, it just remains to show that Q and R are unique. Suppose otherwise. It remains to show the uniqueness of Q and R. Suppose it's not unique. 
Okay, so suppose A is equal to QB plus R and and our A is also equal to Q prime B plus R prime. We want to show that these values are the same. That is, Q and Q prime are equal, etc. Now, we know from here that R is, is less than B. R is less than B, where big is in zero. And here we know R prime is less than B, and bigger than or equal to zero. So now we want to play some games. We want to be able to get R minus R restricted. So from the first equation up here, R is equal to A minus QB, and R prime is equal to A minus Q prime B. Now, R prime minus R is R prime, A minus Q prime B minus R, which is A minus Q B. Well, A minus A is history, so we get Q B minus Q prime B, which is Q minus Q prime times B. Now, just because Q and Q prime are integers, doesn't, positive integers even, doesn't mean that when you subtract them, you're going to get a positive number. Okay. So, let us make that happen. Let's take the absolute value of the left side and the absolute value of the right side. Now, remember, the absolute value of AB is the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. I have a video proving that. So we have this times the absolute value of B. Where B is positive, I think we showed that it was at least 1. So we don't need that absolute value. Okay, so we have this. We have this. Now, somehow, okay, so we have, oops, we have these two statements. And we're going to play a little game with this. If I multiply both sides by negative 1, we get negative b is less than negative r. Negative b is less than negative r, and that's less than or equal to 0. Because if r is bigger than or equal to 0, then negative r is less than or equal to 0. And at the same time, we have this. And look at what happens here. This is beautiful. We get negative B on the left. We get B on the right. In the middle, we have R prime minus R. By the way, I added the two. Now, this could be zero, but this is less than B. So, it's just going to be less than. This tells me, this here tells me that R prime minus R in absolute value is less than B. But now we have this. And this is where we pretty much finish the proof. We know that Q minus Q prime times B is equal to R prime minus R. But that's less than B. That is Q minus Q prime times B is less than B. But B is at least 1. So 
I divide both sides by B and then I get that Q minus Q prime is less than 1. Well, when you subtract two integers and you ignore their signs, how I explain how you find the absolute value of negative 7 is it equals negative 7 without the sign. That is, Q minus Q prime is at least zero. So when you subtract two our integers and they're at least zero, these are the numbers that you can get. But it turns out that this is less than one. Can't be five, it can't be four, it can't be all of those numbers. It can't even be one. This implies that Q minus Q prime must be zero, which implies Q equals Q prime. And it is real easy to show that R equals to R prime. We know that A plus, well, let me not try to remember. We have these two equations. we have that r is equal to q a minus q b a minus q b and r prime is a minus q prime b but we just learned that q prime is q So, that's R. That's R. So, R is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to that. Hence, R prime equals R. That completes the proof. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. We prove theorems every day here. If you have a theorem that you would like to see proven, leave a comment and I'll see if I can do it. Or if you don't like my videos, please leave a comment. If you like them, you're even allowed to leave a comment. Remember, most of all, watch and learn.